we are. We're at Countryside Chapel on Saturday morning, and I just gave everybody their burrito. And I'm going to go ahead and make mine and just show you how quick we put them together. Now, I made these. These are my tortillas. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate them. And I make them in this mini dash. And I'm like mini dash. I'm a mini dash freak. I love all mini dash. So these don't have any, really any carbohydrates in them. All they are is the recipe of, um, I start out with the basic recipe, which is one half cup of mozzarella cheese and one egg. Now, when I want to make a crepe, I'll add two eggs to it. And you kind of got to guess with it a little bit and make it as thin or thick as you want if you're going to do that. Also, I use the same recipe to make the griddle over here, which I'm going to use to make the um, Egg McMuffins next. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just put my burrito together. And you can do anything. What I like to do, if we're gonna go on like a little drive for the day, and we're eating this way, so if we stop and eat, we have to eat stuff that we don't wanna eat. You know what I mean, when you go out and stuff. So I'll make these, I get some kind of cold cut or whatever, and you put this in there. I even brought a bunch to do it, but we'll probably be too full. Put a piece of lettuce in, put this in, your ketchup, your mustard, whatever you like, uh, condiments you like on it. I roll them up, and then um, you can put avocado. I even brought avocados to put avocado in it. And then you've got your um, little sandwich rolls. Stick them in a baggie and go off for the day. So eggs and mozzarella. That's all it is, and I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm going to make mine because I am hungry. All right, so I'm just putting, so simple, I scrambled a bunch of eggs. I made cauliflower rice. That's one of the things that's in it. You don't, yeah, you don't have to do that, but if you, um, you know, like that, you can. I also have bacon here, and you can put bacon or Canadian bacon or whatever you want in there. You can just do egg if you're in a hurry. And then you just simply, here, I'm gonna sit here for the camera. Then you just roll it up like that. And boom. <laughs> but um, some sour cream would be nice with it. Salsa would be nice with it. Do you shred the mozzarella and then mix it with the egg? I'm gonna show you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want salsa? Can we have it? I'm good. Too late? No. Okay, now. out of my way. So one of the biggest things is having something breadish, right? Something that yes. you can replace bread with. So when Mark and I started doing this, can anybody get me like a sponge or a, or a wet uh, cloth or something that way I can clean up my, uh, uh, Karen's going to get it, Marie. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna. Sh I want to shut this off. I think it's off. Whoop! Nice trip again. Did you enjoy your trip? I did. I enjoyed my trip. Nice trip. See you next fall. I like that one. Nice trip. See you next fall. That's cute. Oh, thank you, Marie. I just need it wet. A wet. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is a mini dash um, griddle. It's not a griddle. It's called a, what's it called? A skillet. It's called a skillet. And I'll tell you what, it is a wonderful skillet. I have larger ones, not like Marie's over here. Hers is like the cat, the Rolls Royce. Thank you. Do you know how old that Rolls Royce wow, is? Wow, that's a nice one. But these, I have two that I work with, and anytime I want to make a crepe or um, a tortilla or something, this is what I make. Now, yesterday, I made a whole bunch of them, and look at, I, I, when they're hot, I stick them on top of each other to keep them moist. And they do peel apart real easy. So they really do. I just do it with one hand. So it tore a little. But generally, they come apart real easy and you can put them in the refrigerator. So you spend a little bit of time. I did this before we came to church last night to practice. So we were here at what, four, four, we left at 4.30. So it didn't take maybe an hour because I only had two machines going and I made 
And I think I have about 25 of these. And then this morning, I made them with chocolate. And I, the way I chocolatized them, I'm looking for my thing, I wanna show you. Um, well, I'll, oh, here it is. I found this at Trader Joe's in California. I don't see them here, but the point is, you can get something with collagen or um, bone broth protein, any kind of thing like that. And it is keto, it's low carb or no carb. Um, I don't have my glasses on. It's one gram of carb for a scoop. But it's got the chocolate in it, plus a bunch of good things. I'll do this with um, several different things. I'll put them in just because I want the nutritional value. And why not, you know? My whole thought is, what's in it for me? And the most I can get in it is gonna benefit me. So if, if you wanna make it chocolate, you're gonna have chocolate strawberry crepes with whipped cream and for dessert. And so I went ahead and made them ahead. And that's the good thing. And I was explaining to, as I make this, here we go. So what I do is I grate up a bunch of cheese. And I wanna show you, I know I have it here somewhere. The cheese. Here it is, here it is. And I can pass this around so you can see it. Oh, it's crunchy. Well, I'll tell you why. <laughs> and Marie. Marie, there's no bath there for you to sit with at the table, too. So what I get, what I found out is that I don't buy, if I do do dairy, it has to be organic at the least. You know, if I can get, you know, grass-fed, grass-finished, but organic at least. So when I went looking for organic mozzarella cheese, the only one I could find cost a fortune. And I'm doing a lot of this. I don't want to, I spend enough on good, good ingredients as it is. So anytime, you know, I can get a good deal, I will. So I buy that, it's like seven seventy nine. It's it's just let's say eight dollars. And it's is it two pounds, Marilyn? It's two pounds, isn't it? It's two pounds. So so and they're nummy too. A little tiny bit salty, but I like them. Mm-hmm. They're not they too bad. Stringy, like you can't see them in the car, but it's Well what, what I do is I sit Mark at the at the um, couch and when he's watching TV or something and I hand him a bowl and that bag cut open and he knows that he peels them all because that's the best deal but if you can if you want to use cheese like this you know this they always put like potato flour in these so that they move around and this is $4.99 and the the organic mozzarella cheese that Trader Joe's has also is $4.99 but look at I can almost fill this with one of those bags so um, that's what we do, and then I just pull from this. <coughs> so, in order to make the batter, yeah, I shut it off. Oh, you did? Yeah, you can just leave it open now. Okay. Um, what what I do? The basic recipe. Thank you, Marilyn. Where's all my Where's my thingy? The top, my top. Oh, it's down far. I see it. I see it. And it didn't even jump out and bite me. So last night when I was doing the crepes or the tortillas, whatever you want to call them, I usually use a little mini food processor that I have. But I thought, you know, I just, I happened to see the bullet in the drawer and I thought we used to have it in the motor home. So let me move this over a little. We used to have it in the motor home, so I hadn't been using it. But it worked great, and I had some string cheese already done, or some peeled, and instead of putting it, grating it, I broke it up with my hand and stuck it in here, and it did a pretty good job. So you don't have to grate it if you don't want. You know, be as lazy as you want with it, and make it your own. You know, I, I, I give recipes, but make it your own. Now, one thing nice about doing it, like in a measuring cup, is I'm going to do the basic recipe. I wonder what I did with my glasses or somewhere. Oh, well. No, but maybe they'll work. <laughs> Let's see. I even I even got They're this nice. so I could hang <laughs> on here. We'll see. They're a little strong. <laughs> you know, I, I won't worry about it. It's okay. I'm good. I, I can squint. Thank you very much. Okay, so a half a cup, 
a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, right? And one egg. One egg. Now, always get good eggs. Um, Trader Joe's has a pasture raised. Don't let pasture raised and cage free trick you. So, and at, at Natural Grocers, they have really nice eggs that are not only organic and pasture raised, they're organic and pasture raised. These don't say organic, they're just pasture raised, but at least get that because you know they're eating the worms and things outside. And where'd you get that? At Trader Joe's, they're three ninety nine a dozen. And I love the orange yolks. They are, and you know I've been getting them over at um, actually Marie's daughter raises chickens too, and I'll get them over at the Honeybee store sometimes too. The honey Man, I mean. So yeah. all I did was put the egg and the cheese in here. This is the simplest one. If I can find my fork. What was the measurement on the cheese again? One half cup of cheese. Let me get my fork. Well, I get a new fork. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay, so real easy. Here we go. Just stir it up like this. And you don't have to do anything else to it. We can just put it. I'm going to come over here. These are already on. They're not on. Well, I guess, Marilyn, it would be a good idea if you got them on for me. <laughs> it looks like one Marilyn's my helper. I don't see. Yeah, can you plug all four of those in? And then I'll, what I'll do is I want to show you an alternate way, okay? So if you want to do something smooth like the crepe, because I am going to do the crepe. That's what I'm going to do next. And I think i got to plug in your fort and everything. Okay, here we go. Start warming that up. Okay, so if you have a bullet, great. That'll work. One egg. One egg. In a half a cup. Oh, half a cup. Yeah, and I'm just gonna get. I mean. I don't. I didn't bring the measuring cup. But what is one over? I can. There. I think I got. Yeah. Whatever. That looks like a half a cup to me. You know what, Ross? I made the what do you call them, the waffles mm -hmm. with egg and the string cheese. I did not use any specific measurements. I just threw <coughs> eggs in there. I just threw cheese in there. I mixed it all up. And I put it in there about two tablespoons is what the little waffle maker uh -huh. makes. Okay. And um, they were perfect. They were delicious. They were filling. And they were just, they were awesome. So, so even when ate a bunch of So them, don't worry them. about the measurements. Well, don't get excited about the measurements. Oh, it helps if you plug things in though, huh? But the bullet, the bullet is so easy because you just pour it in. another egg. I got too much cheese in it. <laughs> but then you just I, do that's, it. That's the yeah. glory of that is you can add exactly. and subtract. When I'm home doing the, the videos, you know, for the YouTube thing, um, everything is already ahead and it's, you know, all planned out and it's one thing. So, but this is good. Because the mozzarella has the salt in it, I am I don't put any salt in it. But if you want to, put salt in it. But the crepe is just a base, just like a tortilla. Um, and you can, whatever's inside of it, you don't want to overpower it. So the what I do with it, oh, let me, I have to turn it on. Mm -hmm. And this I just have on low. There's a yellow section in here, and I just have it on low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera and I'm going to go over to the other. Oh, Marilyn, maybe you could turn it over to me. There. I'll tell you when I'm there. 
<clears throat> there, that's good. That's good enough. I just don't want to. Oh, boy. Okay, so on this, we're just going to make, and you don't have to even grease these. And I help it along because I don't want it real thick. I want it thin because it's just going to be my sandwich, right? It's not going to be a... a I love, this is the first thing I got. No, the waffle maker was. And Mark and I were eating keto and we did never, we hadn't had a hamburger with a bun or a tuna fish sandwich or anything in so long. When I saw this, can you give me a paper towel, Marilyn? Thanks. When I saw this, I thought, well, this is a game changer. I, I couldn't believe it. So the first thing I did was make a tuna sandwich. Then the second thing I did was make a, um, a hamburger, and we put the hamburger between it. Then I discovered the walk, this thing right here, the little griddle. This is a mini <coughs> dash griddle. And if you see me do my classes, I started out with one, then I had two, I called them the twins, now I call them the triplets. <laughs> so out of that one recipe, right, I got three of these. So, you know, if you only have one machine, that's fine too. And then you just, but can you cook just eggs? Like I'm going to do that because I'm going to make the egg for the um, the egg McMuffin. And so if you, what I do at home is I just, I have my pan on the stove because I'm making three or four at a time. And I just put the egg in and then um, as soon as I can, I flip it and I, I have it so it's not all done. So I have a yolk and then I put it in, make the muffin with it. Or you can do scrambled eggs with the egg McMuffin. I was wondering, I like that little thing you can make triangle stuff and then just put the eggs at the end. You can, but I'm trying to get everybody not to eat flour and bad sugars because I want you all to live well and be healthy so you can serve the world. So what I do is I stick this in, well, even better, when we're all dying and in the hospital, then, <laughs> then you know, what you're going to do? We can commiserate. You're young no yet, Pete. Bread. You're young yet, Pete, you know? So what I found out was, you know, Mark and I, well, these are cooking, I'll, um, I'll tell you. When, when I started probably 10 years ago, I was really ill. I couldn't do anything. I was, I, I, had the, I was a farmer's agent. I had the office and Mark worked with me. And we lived in a little town of 5,000 people, five miles in diameter. And I was home all the time because I couldn't, I had no energy. I couldn't think straight. I mean, this went on for almost two years. I did not feel good. And if, I, if something needed to be done technical, then, you know, I would do it. But for the most part, Mark ran the whole thing. As you noticed, I, um, I just turned the, the thing over. I like turning them over. Um, so anyway, I got interested in probiotic foods like sauerkraut and things like that and that's another story altogether but I did get involved in that and I started eating probiotic foods and things like that and I started getting better so long, fast forward I'm but this time I'm halfway through a course on master herbalism which included a, a, a whole thing on um, diet a whole whole I have a plaque on that um, my nutrition I forgot what it was called, something nutrition. And uh, I was eating, we were eating all healthy things and everything. And even when we moved here, we started at seven, it'll be eight years July. We started eating grass fed, grass finished. It, eventually we were doing all that and we were still overweight. And I felt like such a hypocrite talking to people because look at, I, I'm really overweight. And I, I, there, I just, it wasn't feeling good all the way. And so, Somehow I I ran across keto, okay, and do I have any of that bad? Oh 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 oh! Let me get a minute. And Somehow I like this is heated. Okay, we're gonna do this next. Does that thing heat on the top or does it just heat on the bottom? That the mini griddle. Yeah, the mini griddle. It's, 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 it's it doesn't come out. Yeah. So do you flip it over? Or do you Watch me. It? I'll show you. Yeah, I like to flip it over. So I pour a little puddle in the middle. This is not real. This is not real thin either. I'll, I'll thin it down. I'll put another egg in it. Why not? I love this thing, and I have a crepe maker, and it doesn't do good. And you just leave it there, okay? And that's how I make the crepes or tortillas. In in the case of the um, 
the um, breakfast burrito, we'll call it a tortilla. In the case of the uh, crepe that we're going to have, we're going to call it a crepe. So, so anyway, we ended up going on. I, I need some more. I'm going to try this. You can turn the camera back over to me, Marilyn. Thank you. This is the one that I already you know, did this with, and this is a nice <laughs> thickness for this. However, are you good? Can you see? This is hot. Yeah, that's good. So you don't want to touch it. Okay, this is hot. Not like the other one where you can lift it up and make it turn unless you have like those gloves on that they barbecue with. Okay. So anyway, I st we started eating this way and the weight just started falling <coughs> off of us. So I found out that I learned that there's two ways our bodies burn fuel for energy. One of them is sugar. And we can only store a little over 2,000, maybe 2,500 calories. You can go about eight or nine hours on the sugar that is stored in the body. That's all it will store. So if you wake up in the morning and you haven't eaten, chances are there's maybe some sugar left. But your body's going to want it. It's going to. It's just like if you had a fire, and you're going to, you know, try to keep warm with this fire. If you choose kindling like pine needles or little pieces of sticks you're going to have to keep putting wood on that fire and that's how it is with our bodies though if they're burning off of sugar or glucose you're going to have to keep feeding it and it's very prone to a lot of addictions too so it's going to tell you it wants sugar it's going to tell you it wants a lot of things because it's looking for the nutrients that your body is missing and it's going to keep telling you to feed it but if you eat this way you become a fat burner. And a fat burner is like putting a big oak log on that fire. And that'll burn all night long. You can take a nice nap with that. So, and that's basically what we're talking about is switching your body over from being a sugar burner to being a fat burner. And it goes against everything that the, that the, that the yeah. sad American diet, there's a food, it used to be a food pyramid, now it's a plate. And uh, so, but, and that really has you eating a lot of grains and things like that and very little meat, very little, well, a moderate amount of meat and, and then fats, hardly any. This is you turn that upside down, except there's no, there's no grains in it because grains are highly inflammatory. And that's another thing, we're all walking around and I put myself in this category without this, we're all walking around with more weight than we want and we've got a lot of issues. We got aches and pains, you know, we have inflammation and they find that inflammation is the root of all sicknesses and diseases. But my question is, is what causes the inflammation? You can't just get rid of it, right? Okay, we know what it is. You can take pills to reduce it and things like that. But if we don't eat the foods that are inflammatory, not only will we lose the extra weight that we have, but there's something that happens called autophagy. And autophagy was just recently in, in within the last, I think from 2016 maybe, discovered this process where the body, when it's in a, a condition called ketosis, which means you're burning fat for fuel, when you're in that state, there are different levels of what's called autophagy. And autophagy is like little Pac-Men that go in and eat all, your, all the dead proteins and the dead cells and things like that that are in there that are floating around that we can't get rid of. The body cleans itself up when you're sleeping. If you don't eat right before you go to bed and you eat at six or seven o'clock at night and you don't eat again until you get up in the morning, you fasted. And you fasted during that time, there's a lot of things that happen in our body, but one of them is, is autophagy. You can't help it, it automatically happens. If it didn't happen, it would be out of the way because I can't see me. If it didn't happen, oh, oh, I got this going over here. Ah, hang on. All right, let's get the camera back. Oh, oh there you go. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, let's see. There we go. So I was always hungry. I'm you're always not. Hungry. Remember where I just left off, and I'll be right there. See, look at there it is. And what I do is I just kind of go like this on the edge. And again, I like to flip it. So I take it and I flip it. It doesn't really need to, but just to get a little on the other side. And then you're and then you're done with your tortilla. And I just pile them up, like I say, so that they, and I pile them on top of each other so they stay moist. 
and that's it. So I'm shutting that off. Now, can you just bring it right way over here? Because I'm going to bring the whole oh, thing. Oh, yes. Aren't we professionals? <laughs> okay, that's great. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's perfect. Just a little over there. That's okay, good. All right, let's see what else we got going on. Oh, boy. You really can't burn these, you know? I mean, you can, but I'm going to use them anyway. Okay. Anything in here? No. All right. We'll make a waffle, too, as long as we're here for a waffle. Waffle's fun. The other day when we did this for everybody, I put chocolate chips in the waffle, in this mix. So what I did is you can mix a bunch up. Um, I'll get back to my story. But you can mix a bunch up and use some of it for plain, and then whatever's left, you can flavor with whatever you want. And How then, long does it keep when you mix that up? You know what, I don't, I don't know. I, use it, I usually mix it and do it right away, but when you find out, you let me know. Normally, it will last for you know three or four days in the, in the fridge if you want to make a batch, but it's so easy to mix up. I just mix it up. The only thing I'll do ahead are these. So I wanted to show you, these are my, um, you know, the sandwich things. Let me get these out of here. Done. And I'm just going to show you how I make an Egg McMuffin, okay? Which is Pete's favorite. Okay, so you said the top of that's not hot, just the bottom's hot? Or is well, if I hot? wanted to pick it up like this and move it, I would. I couldn't do it. It's a little warm here. You want to come in? A little warm, but it's not hot like it is on the bottom. The no, is no, uh-uh. This is hot. This is hot. But they heads. left this little flap here that... Yeah, that doesn't. And I tried other brands, but I really like the Mini Dash, I'll tell you. I love all Mini Dash. Okay. And let me go wash my hands one more time here. So here, here are some of the machines that I have out there. This one is a sous vide machine, and I am going to do the next thing I'm going to do. Can you move the camera up a little bit? My head is chopped off. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, I, and you can do this. You mix up the eggs, and you put whatever vegetables in, and you put them in these little cups. And then you put a little bit of water at the bottom, close it, and it in a sous vide cooks it with steam, and it's real creamy, especially if you use Gruyere cheese. So I am going to do one on the sous vide with the Instapot. All kinds of stuff you can do with the Instapot for a head. You know, you make them ahead, and then you just pull them out when you want to eat them. And that's the biggest thing. I was a program director and a counselor for Jenny Craig, and I still remember the spiel. As I'd walk people down the hall, I'd say, these are some of Jenny's food, which you'll be eating on the program. They're all pre-measured and pre-packaged, one serving at a time. Wouldn't that be easier for you if they were all ready to go? Yeah. And everybody go, yeah, and that was it. And so the whole thing was is, you know, making it easy. Because if it's not easy, we're gonna give up on it. And to me, this is a lifestyle. So, and then when you get bored with easy, then you can be more creative, you know? Then we'll do some real gourmet stuff. So anyway, that's this, and but I, the reason I got this wasn't for the sous vide, it was for the griddle, because it makes a Wonder Bread size piece of bread, okay? And you can do tortillas with it, little little shell tortillas, or you know, different things like that. So with, you don't have to use the cup, you can use the flat thing? Yeah, that's what I, I never use the cup, because if I make sous vides, I do them in my Instapot, and I make a lot more than four. So that's why I don't use. And then, if you want, whoops, if you want to make cakes or something, they also have these, which I have. If after the class you want to come up and look, little bunt, little bunt cakes, exactly. It's great if you're having company. Everybody can have their own little bunt, right? So what's the one you got for the shelf for the sandwich? I'm gonna do. It's a. It's just called a griddle. So I'm going to go ahead and put together some Egg McMuffins. I need my, can you get me the ham, Marilyn? 
Can you, can you get me the ham? There, huh? <laughs> the ham? Bring me over the ham. Put it in a dish in there. Yeah, let's see. It takes about five minutes for that to cook. Did anybody see my fork? I keep missing my fork. Is this the one you made that you just used? How about if you ask me afterward, okay? Because I got to finish this. No, I haven't used the bunny yet. I don't have it. You got a bunny. What's the one you have right up there that you're using? I'll show you later, okay? It's up there. So here it is. Now, if you are going to end up getting one of these, if you put a little mozzarella cheese on the bottom, then put your batter in and put mozzarella cheese on the top, it's going to be crisp. So if you want to do that, like if you're going to do these ahead of time and you want to um, make a bunch of them, put them in the freezer, put them in the refrigerator, put them in your toaster, I'd recommend doing a little cheese on the bottom, a little cheese on the top, just so that they're resistant to moisture and it works a lot better. So now that I have this done, let me shut these off, okay? And then, because I want to finish my story while you're doing this. I need a big plate. Can I have a big plate, Marilyn? Thanks. And my sponge. Marilyn's my helper. Okay. The ham should be cooked. It's cooked in here. It's in here. The ham, sweetie. The ham. Oh, that's the ham. Yeah, yeah sorry. Oh, yeah. That's good. Just put a bunch of them on the plate for me. Thank you. Okay, so McMuffin. I forgot the mayonnaise, okay? Totally forgot the mayonnaise. Butter. Butter, I could do butter. I bought. I brought the butter. Butter's good, butter's better. Butter's better. <laughs> butter. Now because I am, um, I know really, uh, what else is gonna go on here? I like butter. <laughs> and then I'll need a knife to cut this with because we're gonna cut them in half. So another thing I try to do is if I'm buying cheese, this I got at Costco and it's organic, it's a medium cheddar, and that's what we're gonna use. Now if you were home, um, you could put this in a machine and, and um, like your Cuisinart, your fryer oven, Pete, that you put it in there and then you can melt the cheese and do it up big, but we're just gonna do this. So I put a piece of cheese on it. And then at, at Natural Grocers, they have this maple flavored breakfast bacon, and you'll find out it is really good. So that's gonna go on here. And it's not real warm right now, so I could heat it up if, um, if you definitely have to have it heated. Okay. All right. And then I need the, thank you, Marilyn. And then, I need little plates to put all these on so everybody can have their, I feel like I'm missing something though. Um, the egg, the egg. egg. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, did you put the egg on there? <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do the egg with the griddle. And then well, who wants theirs with scrambled and who wants theirs with an egg that's kind of got loose, that's, you know, over medium or over easy. I like over, over easy, okay. <laughs> Is there scrambled egg over there left? Yeah. Okay. I like scrambled egg on it, but. Gonna, it's going to heat up quick. All you do is pour, put it on here. This this is a great little gadget. I'm telling you, if you have a motor home, um, this is a real small. I know Susan had said I have enough gadgets. <laughs> I'm the gadget. I'm the gadget. I'm the gadget queen. We need to get rid of the old ones and get stuff like this that will work. Really? There. And all you just close it. Oh. Now will that be will that be how will that be cooked when you're finished? Will that be uh, immediate? All the white will be. I'll open it up and see how okay. I want it. Yeah, because it might be that. Um, I don't want it too long, but it'd be like a no. Yeah. No, it'll be however you want it, however long you leave it in there. So I'm just going to use the other one just to scramble the egg. Just to do a scrambled one. That's just egg number. No Right, no, because the cheese is going to be is in here. So, you, does anybody want to? Oh, here's some egg. All right. Yes. This is cold. I could get the machine out from underneath there. Does anybody want to eat this cold? I can heat it up. I'll eat it cold. Okay, there you go, Marilyn. You're a good girl. I didn't get a pizza. I know. Oh, you didn't get. Oh, what? That's the other day? Oh. Oh, I did the other day. Okay. 
All right, so here we go. Now, um, normally I do it in the pan. Oh, look at that, it's coming right along. I could turn it over too, I guess. It does heat on the top and the bottom though. But I can't wait. You know, gravity, gravity on the bottom makes it better, right? Okay, so Pete, Pete, I am going to do this on the bottom and this on top for you, okay? All right. Is that all right? Yeah, no, that'll work. And I wish I had them. I got my plate. You want my plate? Oh, okay, that'd be great. We all saved our plates. Okay, good. The big plates. I'm going to give Pete a big, with his bowl, he said. There you go. Okay. And then I put a piece of bacon on it. Boy, this is very decadent at, um, at McDonald's, you know, it is. Well, now, that didn't take any time at all. No. No, that's like my egg maker at home. Yeah. What else? Did I miss something? The cheese. And just put a piece of cheese. There you go. And all right. Should not I'm not even going to cut it, all right? There. Yeah. Oh, that's heavy. Whoa. Good. But I, I you have, won't to, have to eat till dinner time. <coughs> you, better make room. you better make room. It's only because. <laughs> oh, look at the egg. Look at that. Look wow. at that. Up. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Let me see it. Am I in the way? Ooh, look how beautiful they turned out. Look. Oh, yeah. Eggs are my favorite. Mine too. As long as I've got eggs, you can. Well, they're the perfect food. They are the perfect. As long as they're good eggs. Which I'm yeah. sure you know, because if you buy them in the store, like, they're cheap, cheap, cheap. Those eggs, if you want to see a, something, let me know, and I'll send you a video on uh, Farmageddon or something, where they tell how they treat the chickens and how the chickens, their beaks are cut off, they're given bad stuff to eat, they're just nasty. And, and there's no nutrition. There's no nutrition in them. It's just... Yeah, a, they leave the lights on all night long so they continue to... Yeah. So they keep laying their eggs. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to do some here. So the difference between, oh, so I'll go back to my story while I'm waiting for the rest of this to cook. Okay. So Mark and I, oh, I forgot to put, I'm just doing eggs. I thought I was doing the batter here. Marilyn, could you whip me up another batch of batter? Thank, thank you. So um, when I first told Marilyn about it, she went and bought one of those machines, and she said she went and tried everything, didn't you? You did a different uh, variations of stuff. Yeah. Put stuff in it, like yeah. cinnamon, oh, lots of pepper, a little bit of vegetables. Yes, a little bit, a little bit. So anyway, Mark, so then I, I got hooked up with the carnivore, I mean the, the keto, and we just started losing weight like crazy like crazy and then i started we started watching videos and it's important that if you're doing anything that you get support and that's another reason why i have a heart oh i forgot the ham see a lot of times you got ham bacon it's got all kinds of stuff in it so i'll who wants ham in there i'll put ham okay good we'll do it all are there more eggs um yeah there's some in there down there and here's some more here I brought lots of eggs. Okay, so here are we gonna go with the next one. There's the egg. There's the that. A little bit of bacon. There. Wait, do you taste this? This chirp this is so good. In the cheese. Okay. All right. Do you want a whole one? Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Like I say, you can put mayonnaise, mustard, whatever else you like in it, but I, I, uh, this is good here. Thank you. Right. So anyway, that was, that's pretty much it. And we started watching lectures and listening to a lot of doctors talking about it. And we started eating this way. And then we got to a point where which is a whole nother story. We found out that even some of the keto foods that we were eating were causing allergies in our bodies and we didn't know what was going on. It's like, okay, I'm eating all this, I'm doing all this, I'm grass fed, I'm grass finished, I don't eat any soda, I don't eat any sugar, I don't eat any, I'm doing all that's right, why do I have this rash? Or why do I have, why am I tired at this time of the day? Why am I that or why am I this? Well, 
for us, we went on an elimination diet. We went to what they call carnivore, and we just went to eating animal products. And we started doing it for one week, and the seventh day, we didn't eat anything at all. We weren't hungry. So then we, we went on another day, and the reason we tried doing it that I thought maybe it would help Mark because he was like at a standstill and he was having some issues. And I thought, well, why don't we try this? Because the people that promote carnivore, which I do have another YouTube channel called The Christian Carnivore. There you go. <laughs> I just you went it away. I thought I did something here. See how that works? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> What was I saying? Christian Carnivore. Yeah. So I, I, I kept, I got so sick of hearing all of the, the people that were doing Carnivore talk about how we're millions of years old. And I was like, you know, we don't have to be millions of years old to recognize that when, you know, when um, the, the Adam and Eve got thrown out of the garden, the Bible even says they had to till the ground. It wasn't easy to grow. And so they had to grow their, their, if they had vegetables or fruit, they had to grow it. But animals are always around. So if you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any vegetables or fruits to eat, you can find a rabbit or something to kill and cook and eat. So ancestrally, all of us are, have that ability to digest that, eat that food. And there are no known allergies. You might find people that say they can't eat beef or they can't eat a meat because it bothers their stomach, but all that really means is that they don't have the gut flora, yeah. that means the good bacteria to digest those foods. Exactly. And you can change that. When you're eating garbage, you, you got it's gonna take a little bit of time for your body to recognize good, just like if you're eating good, you know it's the opposite. If you're eating good and you start eating garbage, you know right away. Mm -hmm. If you haven't eaten sugar for a while and then you go and you eat something, um, Marilyn has a has a perfect story on that. I don't know if you want to tell it, but um, you know you want to tell it. Mm -hmm. Okay, as soon as she's done chewing, I'll have her come she's and tell. So shy. It. We I need know. To help her get out of her shell. <laughs> <laughs> so I finish all these because I got to get the. Where's my banner? Okay, here we go. Make more. So I know, really. But at any rate, you want to go ahead and the whole thing of this is is if you, I'm I'm not doing this to try to talk anybody into anything, but if you have any mind to you're not feeling good or you want to lose weight, and I'm not a doctor, I don't even play one on YouTube, to be honest with you. But not a doctor. Not a doctor. And I, I do have a lot of knowledge, enough to make me dangerous. Um, and But I found from trial and error. So what we did is we eliminated the, the all the other things and then after seven days, we didn't, seventh day, we did not want to eat anything. And then the eighth day, I was only going to do it a week for him. But I ended up staying on it. And this was last August. So we, I, I started eating vegetables again because I'm, my family's from Italy. There's, there's, you know, his is from Ireland and Scotland. So, you know, uh, where I'm, my ancestors are from, there's lots of fruit and vegetables and greens growing all year round. So we, you know, for me, we go out to dinner and he'd eat half of my steak and I'd eat half of his vegetables. <laughs> but now we don't do that anymore. So what happened is, is when I started adding certain vegetables back in, I noticed that my, I had a rash that was reoccurring. It would come back. Um, and there were other things that were going on that both Mark and I noticed. And so we will eat some vegetables. We'll eat a salad once in a while. But for the most part, we just eat the meat. But I just encourage anybody, keto is a really good place to start. Um, it's a little different than paleo because paleo gives you more vegetables and the more carbohydrates you have, you're not gonna kick into keto. So everybody's different. There's something called insulin resistance and that is where your body just keeps shooting out insulin because you keep giving it sugar. There's just, there's so much sugar in there that's gotta deal with getting it out of your blood and it just, after a while, it's, it's silent to the task that it has. And your body, your pancreas will keep shooting out more insulin. And then, of course, we wonder why a lot of people have pancreatic cancer. You know, a lot of other problems. Because you're making your organs work too hard to get rid of all the food. Just like digesting. The reason 
flour isn't good for you, and why a lot of people are gluten sensitive is because there's something called phytic acid um, inside their enzyme inhibitors inside the grains and the seeds. And what happens is, is those seeds and grains are made to sprout and grow at just the right time. God did that with all the seeds. They all know what season to grow. They all know what moisture level. They all know it all. So if that weren't true and we ate a, a, a seed, guess what would happen? If there were no enzyme inhibitors there, we'd be growing little watermelons and we'd be, gro we'd be a mess inside. So the way it works is... So that's true that you your swallow of watermelon seed. That's no, <laughs> it will die. It will die because there's enzyme inhibitors in there that when your pancreas releases enzymes to digest those, there's, there's anti-nutrients or there's um, uh, enzyme inhibitors in those things that neutralize, they neutralize those, those digested enzymes. So what happens is your pancreas sends out more uh, to do it, your, your gallbladder sends out bile to take care of certain things, and it just keeps happening. And finally, your stomach just gives up and goes, I'm getting rid of this, you know, it's useless. And so what happens is, is you'll get benefit from maybe some fiber in there, but if you're really trying to get the nutrients out of the food, you're really not gonna get it because it's the enzyme inhibitors are stopping it. So that's another reason why we think we're getting so much benefit from the food we're eating. And of course it's denatured and it's or genetically modified and full of chemicals if you're eating processed foods and everything else. You know, but on top of it, you know, we can't digest it either. So is it a wonder we're all falling apart? It's not our fault. And who knew that our bodies could burn glucose and it could burn fat and fat is the better fuel. You can make a fire to keep yourself warm with kindling, but you can make it with oak and it's gonna be a stronger fire, it's gonna be longer fire. And the same with us. I mean, I was moving around the other day up and down and when Marie's husband said to me, boy, you sure are spry. And I'm gonna be 66 July 1st. And you know, it's just, we always took care of ourselves eating. For I ground my own wheat and made my own bread. And you know, so I mean, I always, you know, we did always watch it, but I got to a certain point and I started gaining weight. And it takes about 3,500 calories, if you're talking calories. Now I'm gonna shut these up and make everybody else cares. If you're talking about calories, um, what was I saying, three? three. 3,500 calories. To put for a pound, okay? So you figure if your body burns two, I'm just gonna round these off. If your body needs 2,000 calories a day to run, okay? And you, burn 2,500 of them or 3,000 of them, maybe you're in your 30s or 40s or 50, you're active and you're doing stuff and you're burning calories, um, that's all great. But what happens when we're older and we're dilapidated and we can't move because we need knee replacement and hip replacement and you know we just we don't have the energy and so we're not moving too much. So now our same body and we're eating, because that's my thing, I'm eating the same. I don't eat any different than I ever did and I'm gaining weight, what's that all about? So you figure if you gain one pound a year, okay? Now that doesn't sound like much when you're 25 or 30, hey, a pound a year, I'm doing good. Yeah. But you know, when you get to be 65, what is that? 30. So let's just take it from 30, 40, 50, 65, that's 35 pounds. Mark and I lost between 35 and 40 pounds. So, and I'll show you pictures, and I'm not big, so I looked really fat, to be honest with you. And I thought I looked good, too. I thought I looked so <laughs> cute. And I see the pictures now, and I'm like, oh, And so, but you figure that, and that's the thing. And that's why the answer is, is if you're eating the same thing you always did, you're not overeating, you don't know why you're doing, you know, it's because, first of all, you are a sugar burner and because if you don't use those calories if you don't if you you know need 2500 or 2000 to go through your day and you're eating 35 or 45 or 5000 calories a day guess what you're 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 going to have to store that extra the beautiful thing about being a fat burner is is that you give the body fat, it gets fat adapted, and then well, your body will use the fat, just like the oak on the fire, the body will use what you give it, and then as soon as it's done, 
it, it doesn't ask for more. It goes for the fat that's stored on your body, which is beautiful. And toxins and pesticides and all the garbage that we eat, all of that gets stored in the fat. So let's get rid of it. Get rid of it. We're going to be healthier. We're going to be for our family, for our kids, for everything. So I'm going to let Marilyn tell her story about when she ate. Rose, can I ask you one question? Yes, go ahead. Ooh. I mean, if you go to the doctor and you clog arteries and that, what happens when you eat all this meat? If you, if I just watched a video this morning on that by a doctor, and I watch a lot of, um, you know, conferences that they have, and these are doctors talking to doctors. It's a whole different thing, and that recently I learned, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I did learn that the way to get, the reason we have those things in our arteries is because it's extra and a lot of it is calcium it's a lot of calcium in those arteries and that's calcium that's not good so one of the things reasons that we get that is oxalates and that is the highest oxalate food that you can eat is spinach so the very thing that spinach is famous for which is calcium one of the things calcium iron it binds to the calcium in our bodies it there's a chemical reaction that happens and it binds to the calcium and we don't absorb it and it turns it into crystals. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things you can look up oscillates or oscillates, however you want to pronounce it. And that's what causes kidney stones and that'll accumulate. And they found recently that a combination of vitamin D3 and vitamin K2 from like uh, natto, which is a, a Japanese cult, uh, fermented soybean, and normally I don't do soybeans, but when they're fermented and organic, it's a whole different story. But they make this fermented, and then they make the vitamin K2 out of that. Vitamin K2 is not easy to come by. It is in meats and organ meats. If you like liver, it's in those. It's in meat. But there's not a lot of it in the vegetables. So what, what we do is we have, um, I buy it in, um, in liquid form. And we take two squirts of the uh, vitamin uh, B B's in the squirts, and then we take um, a dropper full of the K2, and then five squirts of the vitamin D3 every day. And then we're good with the vitamin D, and they're even finding out with COVID that if you have vitamin D, we also put some zinc drops in our, in our drink. If you have those things, then you're really you're really pretty immune. And I learned today at this lecture that I, I watched two lectures, oddly enough, between last night and this morning. And one of them even bragged that people, they, they put people on this kind of eating and then they had people that they did like a placebo. And so they're eating um, sugars and things like that. And they found that the people that were eating this way had less incident of what is present for cancer. So they actually found that eating this way First of all, cancer needs sugar, it needs glucose. If your body needs glucose, like your brain does use, does use glucose, but it works even better off of ketones, which is what the liver produces when you are in ketosis. In order to get into ketosis, you need to be, for Mark and I, we have to go under 20 carbs in order for us to be in ketosis. A lot of people can go under 50, but we are so insulin resistant that means that if we eat anything sweet or anything like that or bread or anything, you know, we gain weight, weight really easy because our bodies don't deal with it. Now, my mom was skinny till she died. She had a metabolism that she just burned. She just burned her fat. Now, she wasn't the kind of person that ate like crazy. She was pretty moderate, but she still ate the things that we ate, and she was able to stay thin and, you know, Obviously, I took after my father. So, but um, anyway, I digress. So I think I forgot what I was saying. Anybody remember where I was? You watched two videos. Yeah, I watched the two videos. Watch the yeah, story. I will. Yeah, well, she'll tell her story. Um, and the, the, I, that was what it was. It was the cancer thing. So what I'll do is if you guys want me to shoot any of those, you know, videos your way so you can start educating yourselves, but the, the thing with the arteries, you, it actually found that the vitamin K2 and the D3, they do something together. And if you watch, uh, there's several videos now on, I even have a book that explains it. It actually goes in 
and snatches the calcium out of the arteries and the veins in the places where it doesn't belong. It puts it through the liver to eliminate it or it puts it where it needs it in our body. I mean, it's amazing what there are things out there that can reverse that. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. It didn't get that way overnight either. Who else needs a uh, um, egg McMuffin? How many? Four more? Five more? Okay. All right. So, Marilyn, you go ahead. You want to move the, uh, you want to come over here? Well, I can tell you want to do that. Right. She's going to tell it right now while I finish. I have a couple questions while you were just on that. Okay, what were they? I take a super beet chew and a blue chew chew. Are those good? Those are great. Add some vitamin K2 to it too, though. And then you get the K2? Well, I'll tell you later, okay? okay. Yeah, I'll help anybody so get anything K, they want. K2. K2, yeah, with, from they a special a source. Though. You want to make sure, you know, I, I'm fussy about. Well, from what I've learned, if you take it in a pill form, your body doesn't digest it. I know. If so the liquid. If you take it in a liquid form or a chew, your body will digest it easier and it'll be yeah. more effective. Okay, so Marilyn's going to tell her story while I do these, okay? <clears throat> okay, a couple years ago, I started on the keto thing and did really, really well. And there's a way that you can test if your body is producing ketones. And I didn't bring mine with me, but. Um, it would, it's a little strip, you know, you pee on it, and it turns a certain color, I know, well, and um, you can, you compare it then to a, a scale so that you can see if you're in ketosis or not. Well, I was in ketosis for about a week and a half, and then I went with my mom and all of her friends to a polo match, and mom made her famous I don't have any more plates, tuna please. sandwiches, and she had some of her mom's out. pickles, which is just buckets and buckets of sugar, and you leave it in there long enough, and it's a little syrupy. And then there was watermelon, and there were homemade cookies, because we were all on a picnic, right? So I thought, well, I'm doing really well. Didn't think much about it. So I had my mom's sandwich. I had two cookies. I had maybe two pieces of watermelon. And I had to have mom's pickles on the tuna sandwich. Anyway, so I was doing really well, sitting there, and we were sitting on the far side of the polo field. Um, I decided it was time to go to the ladies' room, and there was a break. So I walked, I got up to walk across the field to the bathroom on the other side, and I'm walking, and I'm going, okay, one foot in the other. Where'd this come from? I couldn't figure it out. It was like I was dizzy, but I wasn't dizzy, but I, I couldn't. I was, I was, I made it go. Nobody knew. My mom's friends were sitting behind me now, and but nobody knew because I was working at it really hard. Got over there, almost fell off the little chair in the little girl's room, but it was really I was just spinning. Anyway, so then I walked around the far end of the field, came back and sat down, and I was fine when I was sitting still. And then my mom's friend made a comment, and because I was going to get something. And I leaned over, and man alive, it just all activated. So I sat back down, and, and she said, what is the matter? I said, I have no idea. It was scary, because I didn't know what it was. I'd been reading a book. I find out later that it was, um, they call it the keto flu. But you had that, a little bit of nausea, although I never threw up. Um, it was just really, it was scary, because none of us knew what it was. Of course, then my mom's friend told my mom, Oh, you know what's going on with her? Anyways, that was terrible. But I so, was, go ahead. No, I, I got home and looked at my book, and the way you get out of that is drink buckets of water and you chew on the salt. Not chew on it, but salt electrolytes. On the salt. Electrolyte. Mm -hmm. Electrolytes, right? Yeah. Anyways, so uh, I was able to drive <laughs> even home from my mom's and whatever, and that worked out. But I found out what it was in the book. So, I'll be right there. Oh. It's lots of fun, but I did feel good, and uh, there was a way to see if I was in ketosis or not, so I liked that part a lot. Anyways, I'm looking, oh, here it is right here. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to finish those up. Um, what, what Marilyn mentioned was, she mentioned keto flu, and every time she tells a story, I tell her, that's not keto flu. That is keto flu is, well, first of all, what happened to her 
from what I understand, and I've been doing this a while, is that her body reacted to those things because she wasn't used to it. It was she had such an insulin spike. And insulin is the fat storing hormone. If insulin is present, you cannot burn fat. There, it's impossible. It's the fat storing hormone. So the secret is, is not, you know, we all need a little insulin, but it won't stay. You need a little insulin to get whatever, you know, process. If you watch some of the videos, it'll explain it better. But we do, you know, but if you're eating all this sugar, I all turn the- All of a sudden, I mean, I haven't yeah. had sugar for a long time. I had my mom's pickles. I had the cookies, I had she the watermelon, really which is real it. high, oh yeah. yeah, and my mom's. So what keto flu is, and if you do decide to do this, the way you get around it is, is you don't eat, you, you make sure you have electrolytes. If you don't have electrolytes, you're, when you, any diet, you know how you lose water at first? Well, that's what'll happen with this too, you lose a lot of water, and with that water comes the, the sodium, and comes those kind of things, so good salt is important, I, we use electrolyte drinks, powders, that um, I didn't bring them today. I had Did them you? here the other day, yeah. Okay. But they're, they're from, I, uh, if you watch any of my videos on YouTube, I, I show everything that I, that I buy. And this is a, um, it's the, the hand got kind of dried out, so don't crack your teeth on it. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Wow, <laughs> those, those are so good. Aren't they good? And there's no mayonnaise on them or anything. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put mayonnaise on it. I would just leave it. Yeah, I don't yeah, like mayonnaise either. Yeah, so good. yeah. Okay. isn't that maple yeah. sausage yeah. good? Yeah. Wow. And they have that at Natural Grocers. Okay, okay, I'm almost done now. I can make another one. And what is, how many more do we need? How many more do we need of the McMuffins? How many more do we need of the McMuffins? And we're gonna have dessert next. Did you get one? You're all right. Okay, well, you know what I'll do? I'll make them for you to take it home. Okay, that way you can taste it. All right, so, Marilyn, did you have one? Okay, you're good. All right, so that's that. All I'm going to do here now, can we just get all this out of here? I'm going to make your dessert, and it's all done. I'm just going to put it all together. So you saw how I did the, um, thank you, Marilyn. You saw how I did the, um, the tortillas. I do the crepes the same way, except you want to make them a little thinner because, you know, it's a crepe. But if you like, you know, thick crepes, you can. One of the things I did with this batter, which was fun, is I made the consistency that worked, and you got to play with it. I have a video on it, too. But I made cannolis, and I used my Pizzelli machine which was, is an Italian waffle machine as instead of this, okay? And I, I used it, oh and as soon as I took it off the, the iron, I, I rolled it in um, a cannoli. I have cannoli molds, but you can use anything. You can wrap it around a, something, anything, just to keep its shape. And then I took a baggie and I filled it with whatever you're gonna fill it with, and I squeezed that bag and I, I filled those those puppies. Now I freeze dried them, but they were delicious and they'd make a wonderful, easy dessert for people. So all I need is my strawberries. So I did these ahead of time and the chocolate ones are right there. The chocolate and I need a knife. And then I'm good. A knife, a knife or a spreading knife? A spreading knife and I love, oh here's my. So what I did is on this, I have um, uh, organic of course, mm -hmm. cream cheese, and just to give it a little easy spread, I put like a tablespoon of cream, of sour cream in it. And then I sweetened it with my powder, the erythritol. I use the granulated actually. And I usually will keep some in here. And sometimes when I'm making this batter on the tortillas that you had this morning, I just did this and I put, a, I put some in. I didn't do it for you guys um, on the fresh things I just made, but. And then I need a dish to make it on again, like a big dish, there you go. And then I'll need little dishes, to, there they are, good. Marilyn, you're such a good helper. Yay, Marilyn. Yes. Yes. All right, so now we're gonna make, thank you. So we're spreading, oh look, and I got a pretty knife. Okay, so we take one of these. So see, eating this way can be fun. It can be, these are all done, right? Okay. Shut it off. Turn on for a little bit. Yeah. 
It can be fun. It's filling. That's another benefit. Marilyn, when you were doing this, were you hungry? If she's hungry, she wasn't doing it right. Oh, I must have been doing it a little bit right because I was in ketosis. Okay, well. So I was doing it right, but I'd heard, you know, you're not going to be hungry all the time, but. Well, one way to get. I'm so out of it can right Can you now. get the whipping cream out of the refrigerator? <laughs> yeah. So why do you use the I don't know what I Erythrithal. Erythrithal is a, it's a sugar alcohol, but the kind of sugar alcohol that it is does not cause bloating. It, it, the body digests it in the uh, small intestine, I think it is. It's the first place it goes. And so it so doesn't. you don't use stevia? I do use stevia, but when you're baking and cooking, stevia can be bitter. I use it in my coffee or my tea, and I use flavored stevias, which afterward I'll show you. I didn't bring them out. They're down there. For if, if That's great. That's it. That um, I use those for um, sweetening up yogurts or, or any kind, anything that I want to sweeten up and have a flavor. I'll do that with it, and so I'll show you those. Okay, okay everybody got forks? Okay, here we go. Okay, I'll just start. I'm going to need di big dishes for this because I guess I could try to. We have our dishes still. Well, do you want me yeah, to I'll get you serve somebody? Oh, you have a there you go. And these are with the chocolate, and they've got collagen in them. <laughs> oh, I forgot to spread them. It's not the same without the cream yeah. cheese. Yeah. There we go. So erythritol is what I use, and there, I've got all the sweeteners over there, brand names that I like to use as well. So I'll, I'll, I can ex go over that as well. There, it did fit. Wait till you taste these. Oh my gosh, they're so good. You can do mixed fruit, blueberries. So on this, you, some of the things you... Some of the things that... The fruit that you can eat would be berries, because berries are low in carbohydrates. Berries, yeah, blueberries are higher of the berries, but you don't eat, don't go, don't go crazy on the berries. Is that that glycemic index? Right, exactly. So what kind of fruit to stay away from? Everything. Everything except berries. Yeah, if it's high in carbohydrates, well, it's it. You know, it's like. It's a trade-off, you know? Yeah. You have to give up some things. If they're hurting you, if they're making you sick and you don't even know it, yeah. then it's worth a try. And I encourage anybody, you know, if you want to try, we're, we're, I'm here to help anybody that wants to do it. And um, we can, you know, get together on a Did regular... You put inside? Yeah, oh. there's inside and out. Sorry, I usually do that. How about broccoli? Is that good for you? You know, Pete, I'll go through all that with you. You know, it, it isn't good for me. I don't eat broccoli anymore. I will eat some cauliflower, but when I eat broccoli, I do, it does not like me. What about kale? Little, little spoon. Is kale like spinach? Kale is bad. Don't eat kale. Yeah, it's got oscillates. And that's one of the things that Mark and I did. I made smoothies. I grew my own greens, and we had the best smoothies every morning, and we couldn't understand why we were just getting fatter and fatter, and we weren't feeling good. Even if you cook it? No, there's nothing you can do to cook it. If, when, when regards to nightshades. Why would they push kale then? They say how good it is. Well, anyway, I don't have the answer. To, I do have the answer to that, but I can't. It's too complicated to answer right now. Believe me. But isn't it good? Aren't they delicious? Um, what was I saying, though? I'm sorry. I forgot what I was saying. Um, the fruits. So you want to stay with low glycemic. Bananas are not good. You know, there's really not a lot of, oh, I know, the greens. So the ox oscillates are in those. Now, the nightshades, you can get rid of, and that would be tomatoes and zucchini and bell peppers and those kind of things. All you have to do, according to Dr. Gundry, who is a world-famous uh, heart surgeon, he has all kinds of books on the plant paradox and things like that. Yeah. He is a... a, a vegetarian pretty much so I think he does eggs but he doesn't eat 
like I do, so he, I don't agree with him, of course, in everything. But he does, does know a lot about oxalates, lectins, and um, phytic acids. So anyway, according to him, there you go. If you peel the tomato and the zucchini and any of those nightshades, get the skin off, bell peppers too, and get the seeds out, then it's okay. Then the, then the because the skin has all the poison. It it does. It does. Uh huh. And if you or if you cook them in a pressure cooker, it get it neutralizes them. But kale and spinach and chard and those guys, no. Uh uh. The only things that are really safe as far as the greens go, believe it or not, the least the least amount of oxalate is in iceberg lettuce. Oh, wow. There's nothing in iceberg lettuce. It's not, it's, it's, it's actually not as bad as everybody says. There are enzymes in it. There's, it's alive and there's, there's water in it. There's a, so there's, there are good things, believe it or not. It just doesn't have all the vitamins that the other ones are famous for, but you're not getting the nutrients that they're famous for because chances are they're not even there to begin with. What about romaine? Romaine, I do do romaine. That's why I'll do romaine. So if I have a salad, I have Where romaine. Where did you get your romaine? Because that is just the crispiest. Isn't it? At Trader Joe's. You get oh, three of them, and they're always good for, um, it's not that expensive either. No, yeah. Trader Joe's is not expensive. Yeah. Um, you can get cauliflower. If you want cauliflower rice, though, that's organic, um, I go to Sprouts, and I get it there. It depends on when you're going to be there. Okay, did I answer everybody's questions? I went to Dillard's yesterday. No mass requirements whatsoever. Is there enough cream cheese in there, you guys? Dillard's. Yeah. Another thing I'd like to do is I make a really great lemon curd, and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with lemon curd. How do you use gelatin? It it does it by itself because you're cooking the eggs in the you do a double boiler and, the lemon. Yeah. and then I make hollandaise sauce there's all kinds of really neat stuff that you can have on this Rose I do not mean to derail you at all yeah, it's okay. you use your, your instapot often when I'm cooking that way I haven't I haven't what been way is that that you are well I've been lazy and we I haven't really been using it so because I've just been cooking hamburgers the other day I had a, um, I just licked my fingers. I, I had a, um, a, a pound of ground beef. And I thought, oh, I got to cook something quick. I was busy all day long. I worked a 12 hour day this particular day. But I, I remember that, you know, I got to feed my husband. He had gone to work and I got to feed him something. So I hurried up. I went in and I was just going to make hamburgers. And I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I threw the ground beef in a pan, in a, in a bowl. And I added some Parmesan cheese to it, and some uh, parsley and some oregano, and I, I put egg in it and um, mixed it up, and I baked it with some. To I opened up a can of tomatoes, which you can do. That's what I was saying. If you if you um, cook the tomatoes a long time, you break that. So I ate the. I put the tomatoes on it. I put it in the oven, and I went back to work. We had the most wonderful meatloaf. And if you make enough of it, you can have meatloaf sandwiches. Mm. Another thing I'll do is I'll take that very th same thing and I make barbecue sauce. It's really good. No sugar. Delicious barbecue sauce. And I'll make a barbecue. I just made this up a couple months ago. A barbecue um, meatloaf. Now, maybe it's not. Maybe somebody else made it up before, but I'd never heard of it. So I mixed some of the barbecue sauce up with the meat. And I did pretty much the same thing. I put cheese in it, and maybe you can use pork rinds too to absorb some of the egg. And that's where I don't use any breadcrumbs in it at all, though. So pork rinds in place of breadcrumbs. Yeah, but I would mix it with Parmesan cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That goes without saying. Yeah. Parmesan and, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, you know where I get my Parmesan cheese? I, I made it, of course, and I have a bunch that I made, but I like to buy it, you know, is, um, Sam's Club. I went to Costco yesterday to get some, and um, it's it, they, it's cost a fortune there. And it's uh, it's not Romano. It's something it's else. Oh, it's not Pecorino. It's Pecorino. It's I think. Pecor I like the Pecorino better. In, in there, the in there, fine. I it's think I get there. Romano at, but it's a I get a huge hunk. Yeah. At Sam's Club. For how much? 
It's like eleven dollars or twelve dollars. Oh, like it is. It is. Yeah. So Mark's going to take me to. He doesn't know it yet, but he's taking me to Sam's <laughs> okay. Club. Who else needs one? one? Had one. Wants to take one home. What are we doing? Yeah. Uh, do we have any more? Yeah. 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 Good. I'm going to have one too. I had one of these early this morning, just to make sure it was good. That's what they all say. So if you guys ever want to get together, like for a day or a morning, we can just get the machines out and make a bunch of these. You can take your baggie home, and we can set out a, a plan. You know, so like we get up in the morning, and if we do eat breakfast, I'll make bacon and eggs generally. And that's a real easy thing to make. What we try to do is we try to extend our fast as long as we can because we want autophagy to happen. And the longer you don't eat, the more your body is cleaning itself. So what time is good breakfast time? We like to 10.30 or 11 o'clock. And then we don't eat lunch. So that makes it good. If we can last, if I wake up and I'm hungry, guess what? I'm making bacon and egg. I'm letting my body tell me what it wants. If it says it's hungry, because I'm not feeding it, carbohydrates, sugars, cakes, pies, cookies, and all that stuff, I can trust what it says. So I go ahead if I'm hungry, but generally 10, 30, maybe 11 o'clock, and then I'll make the bacon and eggs or what I'm making for breakfast, and then um, we don't eat again. We don't eat lunch again until dinner, and we'll eat dinner. And then we eat dinner like 5-ish, if Mark's working, 5.30. And then we don't eat again. Now, if we what we've been doing is because we like to snack, which you know, whatever we like to snack. <laughs> Everybody knows from the last Wednesday and thing. If you didn't see, I don't have any left here, but I made custard. It's just four ingredients, you know. That's simple. It's on the YouTube channel, Rose Condren. You just type in my name, Rose Condren, and you'll get my YouTube channel. Or let me know, and I'll email it to you. But I'm gonna do. Uh, C O N D R A N. I'll 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 make sure you. It's in the bullet. It's in the uh, what you call it. You know from. The handout. Sure. It's in the our directory. I don't have one. Oh well, there's some right out there. We'll have to make sure you get one. Okay. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Boy, I'm sorry. You like to snack? Yeah. So we'll have that at night, or we buy these pork rinds. Now the other day I made guacamole and Mark got to take his pork rinds and dip them in oh, the guacamole. And one thing nice about pork rinds is they're pretty filling. And if you read what potato chips, how bad potato yeah. chips are, they are, they are killers. Yeah. So, and all the hydrogenated oils or hydrogenated oils and all that stuff, it's just really bad for you. So, peanuts, the thing about peanuts, I'll tell you, Pete, peanuts, the way they, the way they harvest peanuts, First of all, peanuts are a legume. They're not a nut. Right. But peanuts, because of the way they store them universally, they are very prone to mold. And unless you grow your peanuts or get them right fresh and roast them yourself, there's mold involved. Cashews and there's a, too. Cashews really? I have, yeah. Cashews are not on this program because they're very high in carbohydrates. They're, yeah. they're just, um, macadamia nuts are the least. Macadamia nuts, um, they have those at Costco. They're 20 bucks a bag. But I, t I like to take the macadamia nut, and that's another thing we'll do is we'll make chocolate. I have molds, I make chocolate, I use raw cacao and raw um, coconut, cocoa butter, and then all the other stuff, and I make them, and I'll, I have the little molds, and I'll put a nut in them. I crush up, pecans are okay too, I crush up pecans. And then I mix, so I do all different ones with the chocolate in those little molds. And then if you have a chocolate thing where you need chocolate every day, you can have it. And you just sweeten it yourself. You get it as sweet as you want it with the art, with the sweeteners that I use that are, that are okay sweeteners to use. And then, so you find things that you can snack on. And, and you know, you can even make these. We like, we did on Wednesday, we made a bunch of these with just the recipe I used, and I, but I added pumpkin spice, I added sweetener to it, so they were sweet, and what else did I put in it? Um, I put the chocolate chips in it. I went around like this, and I just put the chocolate chip and, and closed it, and they're like chocolate chip cookies. They were good, Hummer, and I even forgot they're to put delicious. the sweetener in the first batch. They were good. <laughs> they were so good. And that's a good thing to put, you know, and if you put the cheese on the bottom, 
and put your batter down and the cheese on the top. It'll be crisp for you and you can you can take them. Even my grandkids who are such bad eaters, even they ate the, the, the different things that I cooked. So the cookies and everything. So I'm gonna shut the camera off. I think I'm, I'm good. If anybody's got questions though, we'll go from there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, Rosa, you said recipes are online at your website. Right, what I'm going to do, it's the bottom one. No, on the front, on the front.